Good morning, everyone. It was a very interesting uh, presentation from Emily. Uh, we're ready to start our meeting and uh, let's start with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Uh, let's have our moment of reflection uh, for the uh, cure of the pandemic and uh, hopefully looks like uh, things are optimistically, pessimistically getting better. Uh, thank you. Uh, today is uh, Earth Day uh, and uh, a few little facts. Earth Day, uh, the first Earth Day was in uh, April, 1970. And uh, this is the 51st year. Uh, later in that uh, same year, under uh, President Nixon's uh, term, uh, the Environmental Protection Agency was formed, I guess, uh, sometime in December. Uh, Earth Day was a coincidental with the form of the Environmental Protection Agency. And, and the purpose of Earth Day was to uh, demonstrate our support for the protection of the environment. And uh, that year marked a big change in how we looked at uh, our environment uh, with the Clean Air Act coming in and uh, which led to a lot of other well-deserved uh, regulations because uh, you think things are out of control now, they were certainly out of control in the 60s uh, with industry polluting uh, the environment. Any of us uh, who worked in any of those industries uh, were well aware of. So uh, each day, hopefully the environment will get better and protect us. Uh, and maybe extend the extinction of man for a few more years. <laughs> okay, uh, as you were aware, last week we uh, broke uh, after the meeting and had a uh, impromptu uh, board meeting for a couple of issues that uh, the first one was uh, we were thinking about having uh, paid entertainment uh, for the uh, spring luncheon, which is going to go on. And uh, Larry will give us more information on that. But for various reasons, uh, the cost being prohibitive and you know, passing, we didn't want to pass it on to the uh, participants. Uh, because it may have put uh, it out of the reach of most people, you know, some of the people uh, that were attending, and nor did, uh, you know, we, we hadn't subsidized, uh, we were thinking of subsidy, uh, subsidizing it by the organization, but it's something that we've never done. Each uh, activity is really, um, you know, pays its own way. Uh, Plus for a couple other reasons, uh, the most important one was that we felt that after being apart for what would be almost a year and a half uh, or a year and a couple of months, uh, anyone going probably would want to spend more time socializing and, and uh, talking to our friends uh, rather than, you know, sitting back and listening. So it was decided by the, unanimously by the board that uh, we would not have any paid entertainment and, and we would use that as a, uh, a good you know, way so that we could socialize with our friends. Uh, the second, uh, you know, we've been kicking around the wording and our policy regarding events. 
And uh, based on what we're hearing and, and based on uh, some situations, we finally resolve what our policy is. So essentially it's for all in-person activities. Every attendee is required. We thought we, we, we bandied the words of requested or not. So what we're saying it is required, each attendee is required to be either fully vaccinated for COVID or be tested within 48 hours prior to the activity and have a negative result. So if anybody is averse to being vaccinated, we're not saying you can't come uh, just, you know, to protect yourself and others uh, that you show a, uh, that, that you have been tested prior to the activity. Uh, and as far as face masks, social distancing and any other uh, requirements, uh, we're gonna go with whatever the, is, in, is the current state or CDC requirements and guidelines. And uh, if you reading the paper, the governor is saying that uh, in the very near future for any outdoor activities, it's not going to have, we're not gonna require face masks and uh, whatever, you know, other guidances that the state comes out with, but they left in there that uh, if, if the situation changes, then we may go back to face masks and social distancing. So uh, we're gonna go along with whatever the current uh, state and CDC guidelines are recommending and that's what we would use. But we are still gonna require that everybody be fully vaccinated and test or tested. Uh, we're in that vulnerable stage and we don't wanna take any chances and we wanna protect our members. Joe, this is yeah. Steve. I think you might want to mention that it's on the honor system. We're going to, we're not yeah, going to. We're not going to police it. Uh, thank you, Steve. Uh, we're not going to police it. Uh, hopefully, we're all, uh, you know, uh, what's what's the word I want to use? Uh, responsible. Well, responsible. That uh, we're not going to put ourselves or anybody else in jeopardy. Uh, however, if we find out that uh, we know people, you know, if people have abused it, uh, we may ask for it. But we're not going to be policemen. We're not going to have uh, uh, a, a passport requirement or whatever. So everybody's on their own honor system, and hopefully, you know, they can see that we're responsible uh, for ourselves and our friends. Next slide, please. Or if anybody has any questions. Oh, thank you. Uh, there is a management manual that was developed uh, for the members of the board and the officers as to what their roles, are, specific roles are. And uh, it's been out for a while and has not really been revised uh, for about four years. So uh, Carl and uh, a couple of the guys are, are looking over it and uh, coming up, gonna come out with a revised uh, management manual that will be uh, used in conjunction with the bylaws and the procedures uh, manual. And that's ongoing, that should be done within the next uh, month. And then uh, most importantly, uh, we recommended uh, that we continue with the informal Zoom meetings throughout July and August, similar to what we did last year. Uh, for the new members, uh, because we couldn't get together last year, we decided that we were gonna have an informal uh, meeting from 10 to 11 each Thursday, uh, unstructured, uh, anything or that anybody wants to bring up at the meeting or just talk uh, or if they wanna make a presentation or discuss an issue, uh, that would be uh, 
the format yeah. that we're going to use. It's like I say, it's, a, it's an unstructured uh, meeting. Maybe a couple of minutes for any specific announcements uh, for an activity, but other than that, uh, uh, it's it's all it's not required that you attend or. You're not going to miss out on any business. Uh, it's just a form of a way to have everybody get together throughout the summer. Hopefully, we'll be able to get together live in groups and uh, go from there. And today's speaker is Mark Noonan. Uh, and he's going to be talking about Robert Moses, who. Uh, Love him or hate him, but uh, he was a, a force in the uh, mid-century. And uh, we'll hear all about him. And uh, Stu, uh, next with the future programs. Sure, Joe, thanks. Uh, good morning, everyone. Um, hope everyone is doing well today. Uh, next week, uh, Kai Harada is going to talk to us about uh, <clears throat> that box in the back of the auditorium when you uh, enter or leave, for example, the uh, Palace Theater, all those switches and levers that control the lighting and the sound. Uh, he's a en sound engineer, and he'll be talking to us about that. I'm personally being kind of a technical guy, looking kind of forward to that kind of uh, uh, presentation. And then on uh, May 6th, Matt Ritter, who is the uh, Speaker of the House of Representatives for Connecticut, uh, we'll be talking to us about a number of uh, issues going on. When we originally made the contact, COVID was the big deal. Um, I'm sure he'll discuss that, but I've been talking to his representative and we'll probably discuss a couple other interesting topics. Um, <clears throat> Ryan uh, Ventura joined us again. Uh, Ryan's been a um, speaker with us, I'm trying to think, uh, almost ever since I began in, uh, six years ago. Um, but he's always got interesting things to say. This time he's gonna teach us how to deal with uh, unforeseen circumstances. And he's calling it, uh, I wish I had known um, and understanding your options. So that should be a pretty uh, insightful presentation from, uh, from Ryan. And lastly, uh, on May 20th, uh, Steve Wer Wertheimer will talk to us about uh, how, how we are in the world, the birth of the United States as a global and global supremacy. That should be a pretty interesting and insightful topic as well. So uh, next slide, please. Uh, need some help on uh, developing these programs. Um, right now we have an empty slate for the fall. Um, uh, got a long list of people we can contact, but I really would like some help in uh, developing the, uh, uh, the program program. And so uh, appreciate it if anybody would volunteer to help out. Just need a few guys to uh, contact uh, speakers in different in different areas, uh, so that um, frankly I don't have to do, do it all myself. Um, so I'd appreciate any help anyone could provide. And the contact information is up there. And uh, thank you very much. Hey Stu, this is Carla. I just noticed is there a typo on your uh, email address? Oops. Yes, there yeah. is. I, everyone has it up online. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So there's no no O, I guess. Right. 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 I'll correct it. Sorry. That's okay. You're fired. Yeah. Uh, in uh, support is to, you know, having uh, had to do that role for the last couple of years, uh, any help will really be helpful. I mean, it's, if, it, if it's just contacting, you know, we, we end up getting leads uh, for speakers and, uh, even if you just contact through email or try and make phone calls for uh, three or four speakers. And if there's uh, four guys, three or four speakers each, uh, prospects, it's 12, it's three months of uh, programs. It, it, you know, the, the, the chairman has a lot to do with coordinating and uh, contact, you know, final contacts and uh, whatnot. So, uh, yeah, if anybody could help, it's it's not onerous. It's not you're not going to be running around town or hefting boxes or anything else. It's just uh, coming up with maybe some thoughts and suggestions. Uh, we all know people, and 
plus the fact that we do get leads and it's a follow up on those leads. So please consider helping Stu. Uh, I say it's, it's, it's an onerous task. It's probably the hardest uh, position to, you know, getting the speakers uh, for, you know, two years running. So thanks, Joe. Think about it. <laughs> <laughs> Next slide. Ira. Good morning. Last week, our online attendance was 54. I believe everybody's received the minutes with the corrections and additions. If there are any more, um, please state so now. If not, Joe, it's yours. Okay, I haven't heard any uh, complaints either. <laughs> So, uh, or corrections. Uh, so let's assume, you know, the minutes are approved for April 15th. Thank you, Ira. Larry. Okay. Uh, the 920 discussion groups. Uh, today we had Emily Boothroyd, who works in Laurie Price's uh, group. And I think she's a very nice addition to the... Uh, speaker menu. So I suspect that we will continue to ask Emily to participate uh, in our programs. Uh, going forward next week, uh, April 29th, Art Feldman will be leading the discussion on current events. On May 6th, Joe D speaks on investing. Teenth, Bob Butke on technology. On the 20th, Lori Price on money matters. And May 27th, Joe D comes back to do current events. Uh, so we'll have uh, about a month uh, differential between two current events uh, uh, discussion group leaders. And that there's a lot of events going on. So there'll be a lot to talk about. Uh, look forward to a lot of you guys who come on late coming on a little earlier and participating in the discussions. Next slide, please. Yesterday, we had a, uh, a walk in uh, Waveney. We had a very nice turnout. Uh, as you can see here, Bob and Jean Meyer, my wife, Susan and myself, uh, Franco, uh, John Cullen, Dave Kaplan, uh, Sari and Alan Jaffe, Lou Terry and Jerry and Joan Kranz participated. Carl took the picture. Uh, he, of course, was uh, uh, the Walker leader. And it's a great idea to come out, uh, enjoy fresh air, scenery, conversation, and exercise. It's an outdoor activity, so you don't always have to wear your mask if you don't want to. Uh, and we're pretty much spaced out as desired. Uh, it's, it's great, and I encourage more of you to do it. Uh, next week, it'll be Cove Island Park will be the location. Next slide. Uh, a group of people went to uh, Woodlawn Cemetery in the Bronx that Alan Krim uh, organized. Alan is not with us today, uh, but Bob Meyer, who did go, has agreed to uh, describe it and talk about it. So Bob, you're on. All right, good morning, everybody. Um, as Larry said, uh, Alan is uh, traveling today. So uh, uh, he asked me if I could uh, tell you a little bit about this. Uh, the three pictures that you see here on the lower right is the group. There were 13 of us that went. Uh, the woman standing on the steps was our guide. Uh, and she took us on about a 90 minute walk uh, throughout the cemetery. Um, uh, just a little bit about the cemetery. Uh, it was established in 1863 as an act and is an active 400 acre non-sectarian cemetery. Uh, the grounds are very much like a huge park um, and it's designated as a national historic landmark. Uh, it contains over 1300 private mausoleums many of which were designed by famous architects and sculptors. Uh, many famous peoples are, uh, people are buried here, uh, including Robert Moses, who we're gonna hear a little bit more about later on. Um, 
In addition, Fierro LaGuardia, former mayor of New York, uh, J.C. Penney from the J.C. Penney department stores, Irving Berlin, Duke Ellington, Augustus Juilliard, who founded the Juilliard School of Music, and uh, Robert Lehrman from Lehrman Brothers Financial Operation. Um, the photo on the top is a mausoleum of F.W. Woolworth from the five and 10 cent stores. Uh, as you can see, it's quite, uh, quite an, uh, it's an Egyptian revival uh, design. The one in the lower left is a mausoleum from the Armour family, the Armour Meatpacking Company. Uh, the gentleman who founded that, August, uh, Herman Armour, uh, that's the family mausoleum. So you can see there's quite a few trees around that. So it, it gets a whole different view from uh, the Woolworth mausoleum, which uh, more or less stands out in the open. Um, so we had a very nice trip. Uh, I think everybody enjoyed it. We were all outside. It was a beautiful day. Uh, and at the end of the tour, we walked over to a nearby Irish pub and we all had lunch outdoors on the sidewalk. So we were all uh, socially distanced the entire trip. Uh, and again, I say everybody, I think, had a nice time. And we thank Alan for putting this together. Um, he always finds these real interesting venues. Um, so again, I, we thank Alan for that. Bob, a question. Uh, yeah. do, you, do you know if uh, somebody just wanted to go down there? I mean, it's, it's like visiting a cemetery. And uh, could you... Uh -huh. You know, yes. Maybe have a, is there a uh, guidebook or something that you, somebody could do on their own? Uh, uh, yes, there is. I would suggest you just uh, go to their website uh, and see what they have offered. They actually do run some uh, trolley tours through the cemetery, but I think it's mostly done for groups. Um, you would have to check on that. Uh, they do have some interesting programs where they'll have a jazz afternoon and they'll have some uh, jazz musicians come in uh, and actually put on a performance in some of the areas uh, in the cemetery. Um, but they seem to be very um, conscious of getting the public involved and, and in there to see everything. Um, but you could, of course, just go in on your own, um, which is what we did, actually. Uh, Gene and I, uh, when we were through after lunch, we uh, spent another 15, 20 minutes just sort of driving around uh, seeing some of the parts of the cemetery uh, that were not included on the tour. But uh, check the webpage. Did you see my Uncle Louie? <laughs> no, I didn't. <laughs> Thank you, Bob. Thank you, and Bob. again, thanks to Alan in absentia for organizing the, uh, the trip. Okay, you're welcome. Uh, we did have a golf get-together. Unfortunately, everybody absent-mindedly forgot to take pictures. I can say a good time was had by all the participants and those that had lunch at the distillery enjoyed that too. Uh, I'll let Brian or and or Howie uh, say a few words about the get together. Well, I would only add that it was a very nice day. Everyone had a good time and it was fun to play golf. Whether you're good or bad, it's still fun to play golf. And uh, it was a really nice day. And the meal was great afterwards. How are you guys? How? Oh, yes. I just want to announce the overall winner was myself. <laughs> I also happened to be a scorekeeper. So <laughs> now we all had a real good time. The, the only disadvantage is that by the time our group, which was last finished, uh, came to the lunch, a lot of the people had left. So we have our spring outing. It'll be shotgun and we'll all be eating together. So please, when we get the notice in a couple of weeks about it, sign up, guys. We need you. We need your sucker money because it's a playing for cash. So it'll be very nice. Thank you. Next slide. Uh, tai Chi lessons. Um, Carl, are you with us today? Yeah, I'm here. Um, we're set for Monday at 2.30 at Scalzi Park. Those who are coming... Just park at the first first parking lot on the right, and the session will take place somewhere between there and like the tennis court area. Uh, Alma Weinberg from the senior center is going to coordinate this uh, and, and introduce Tai Chi to all the participants. And based on the interest from this session, we'll see 
how much commitment we have to have this, have us have lessons done every week or have a session every week. We're up to 11 now and um, we'll see how things go and we're looking forward to it. But if anybody's still interested, let me know or, or even show up. I mean, well, you know, there's nothing formal about signing up. It's just whoever's interested can come and get a sense of what, what Tai Chi is about and whether they have an interest in doing it. And there's a lot of, and, this, and Alma will explain this, some of the benefits of Tai Chi. Um, and that, that's one, you know, that's one of the benefits of the sessions for people to learn what, what, what Tai Chi can provide. And that's about it. And this first session is uh, gratis, correct? That's correct. Okay. Um, next slide, please. Uh, the annual tennis tournament is going to be held Monday, June 7th. Uh, Joe, you want to say something? Or Larry, if you're on. Joe, I think I saw you. Yeah, I'm here. Um, we haven't gotten any additional entrance. Uh, I don't have my list in front of me, but I think we have eight or nine. Okay. So there's uh, nothing new to report. Perhaps we okay. should send out another um, request. Yeah, uh, those who play tennis, uh, you know, do sign up. Or, uh, we'd like to, whether even if it's not a formal uh, tournament, it'd be just nice to get together and hit some balls. So, yeah, I think uh, if, if we don't get a tournament, I think we will do that. Hey, Joe okay. Carl, I, I just had the thought, I should have thought of it earlier, uh, checking our new members' uh, responses to the questionnaire to see if any of the new members are interested in playing tennis and uh, provide that information to you. Great. Next slide. Uh, the spring golf tournament uh, on Monday, June 28th. I bring back Brian and Howie. Okay, I haven't got a lot just yet. What I plan on doing is I'll start. We have the menu worked out and we have Howie's already set it up. So we have our time slot. Um, but I'll start sending out emails a little bit later, probably around the middle of May. I'll start harassing uh, former players that have played in the past. But for now, uh, it, you know, everything will be pretty much the same as it has been on years gone by. How about you got anything? No, you, <clears throat> you know, it's pretty good. We'll have the pricing. <clears throat> It'll be different teams from last time. We make sure that uh, the teams get scattered around. Uh, there'll be different captains from last time. Uh, what we do is we take the top rated player who was captain. They had it two years ago. Last year was the second rated. Uh, this year will be the third. Next year will be the fourth. And then after that, it'll be my turn. So we'll, uh, we will have it all set up for you going shortly. Like Brian said, in the middle of May, Carl will give us a very fancy slide, especially with our three friends down the bottom there. Thank you. Yeah, Howie, I thought you said you didn't have any photos from... Uh the uh yesterday this this week's golf outing but i see a picture in the lower left hand corner there well yeah that's myself brian <laughs> and uh i think it's you carl thank you <laughs> uh, you guys just one thing uh can you correct the slide uh saying vaccination or uh testing uh required following our uh organization policy so is that Okay, uh, we are going forward with the uh, luncheon um, at Rock Rimmon. Uh, as a matter of fact, I'm putting down a deposit today and the contract will be signed. Uh, uh, the menu is on the next slide. Uh, it's gonna be traditional garden salad, uh, warm bread and rolls with sweet butter. The, you have a choice on the main course of miso gla glazed salmon or chicken piccata or a six ounce filet mignon uh, dessert uh, will be put on and club soda and iced tea will be served on arrival and uh, as well as during the course of the meal. Um, cash bar, I can't see the slide gets cut off at the bottom. 
for alcoholic beverages, there will be a cash bar. Um, I will be sending out via an email blast because that's the easiest way to do it uh, through Steve. For those who have indicated that they are coming, uh, a request for um, uh, their choice of main course. Uh, also, uh, where to send the monies, the money, it'll be approximately $50 uh, per person. I'll, I'll finalize that uh, by next week. Um, and then uh, uh, ask, we'll, prob we'll probably do tables of eight so that they will be a little more spaced out than the formally, formal 10. If you do have a table of eight, amongst your friends, uh, you should please list them when you respond. And uh, if you don't, we will do our best effort to uh, um, seat you according to your desires. If you can only have one other person, one other couple or person that you wish to choose from. Again, uh, Vaccinations will be required. And for those who could not be vaccinated for some reason, um, a, uh, uh, a negative COVID test within three to five days prior 48 to hours. 48 Larry, hours. 48 hours is our policy. Okay, well, whatever that uh, is required. So to attend um, and inside, uh, the dining room when you get up if you choose to wear a mask you should while walking around obviously you don't have to wear a mask you can't wear a mask while you're eating and drinking but uh, that's where we stand right now and we have about uh, a little over 60 people so far uh, I would hope to get over 80 so the uh, intention to attend is still open right now and uh, let me know by email with a copy to Howie Breslow uh, that you intend to attend and then we will formalize uh, everything uh, after the email blast goes out. And for those uh, who are not here participating in the Zoom meeting, please feel free to uh, uh, talk to other members uh, who you think might be wishing to attend. Uh, just to give you an idea, last year, uh, 2019, I think we had 130 uh, participants in this particular luncheon. So uh, uh, looking forward to uh, having a, a nice sign up and uh, having seeing you all and having a nice get together. Next slide. Uh, Stu, uh, let you say a few words about the annual picnic in September. Good. Um, talking about uh, get-togethers, this will be our uh, second big get-together. Uh, as you can see, it's on the 23rd, and all the arrangements are pretty much uh, the, the general important arrangements have been made. I've called for a meeting of the uh, uh, picnic committee. Anybody interested in, in, in being part of the picnic committee? Uh, please contact me, Stu Madison, optonline.net. Um, you know, anybody who wants to help, please uh, let me know. It would be, it'd be useful. Um, the uh, rules are the same we've heard before. Uh, shots required or a 48-hour um, indication that your negative testing has arrived. And, uh, you know, given the current law, it uh, looks like we – would be a go unless the rules changed. Um, as you all probably read the paper uh, right now, outdoor events are pretty much uh, have no restrictions. And if that's the way it is, then then we'll have no restrictions. Have a picnic as usual. So um, looking forward to that. And what I'll do probably around uh, the June 3rd meeting of us here on Thursday, begin to take uh, signups for the picnic, uh, June 3rd. So uh, that's it. Have a great day. I have a question. I yeah. have a question for Stu. Sure. I'm how, how do you monitor the servers? 
that are coming from the um, uh, the caterer with regard to vaccinations or testing? These are the same guys who, who run the uh, patio cafe at the city at the uh, municipal center, municipal building. <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll check, but I imagine they're they're. They're all certified or whatever the rules require. Okay, I hope so. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. I got a question for Larry. Yes, Bill. Did you get my email? Yes, I did. Okay, thank you. <laughs> okay, membership, good morning. Uh, any guests or visitors this morning? Okay. Um, the, officially, our membership numbers haven't changed since last meeting, but I, I'm, we're starting to see something which I hope is a, is a pattern that as we get back to our in-person activities, that um, some of the members who have dropped to the inactive status will uh, will be coming back again. Now, Miles Sheffer is one of those. Uh, I understand his check is in the mail to, uh, to Lloyd. And... Um, we, we certainly encourage it, whether it's, it's tennis or golf or the luncheons, that uh, people come to us. Don't be, don't be afraid to uh, correspond, to contact people who uh, may not be current members, but were members last year, and uh, encourage them to come out and enjoy the uh, activities they participated in last year, now that we're becoming live again. And uh, what we're doing is just asking that the uh, members, <clears throat> the inactive members, pay their $30 uh, dues for this year. We've uh, decided not to uh, impose the $10 late fee because of the circumstances. And uh, we, they're all welcome to uh, come back and, and join us again. So uh, please pass that message around to uh, people you uh, you meet and talk to. Carl, excuse me, one question. Uh, the inactive members, are they still receiving emails? uh regarding the minutes and and uh, activities i don't know if you know or steve we haven't no, taken no. off the email list have we they've been they've been taken off the email list they've been taken off they were warned that uh you know if they didn't pay their dues that was the end of it but in view of what carl was saying i'm wondering if you know maybe we should uh at least the ones that have been, became inactive over the last year or so, uh, get them back on the list so they see what's going on at least for the next month or so. If there's no real response, we, you know, it doesn't cost us anything to to do it. But well, we have we have uh, sent out uh, just in the past uh, few weeks new emails to all of those people. Uh, inviting them to come back. I think you've you probably remember seeing the the text of the. Uh, email. Oh yeah, no, I did. I'm just saying. But you know, you mentioned that uh, with the with the way we're opening up and, and having more activities, uh, th there's no way of them, so to speak, knowing about that. Uh, so maybe keeping you know putting them on through. I think it's, I think it's a good idea. Through Steaming you know June and uh, May and June. Yeah. And see if it sparks you know peaks in interest uh, for them to come back. Good idea. Thank you, Carl. Okay, fellowship, uh, a couple things. Uh, I remember Bruce Tillman lost a very close uncle last week. So we've sent him a sympathy card and uh, our thoughts are, are with him uh, during this difficult time. So any uh, news from uh, any of the rest of you, good news or otherwise? Yeah, I would like to share my experience. Last week I visited with my daughter she lives in Portland, Oregon, and I was curious to go downtown and see damage um, inflicted on the downtown businesses by all these riots and demonstration. And unfortunately, I want to report that <laughs> big sections of downtown are dead. You know, um, um, store fronts are boarded. Um, homeless people taking over certain sections um, and expand uh, to a degree that we stay at Marriott Hotel, which is not, uh, you know, Hotel, Motel 6, but the homeless uh, tent was right across the 
entrance to the hotel. My daughter plays with her children in the park nearby and the homeless tents are also there. So not a encouraging picture, but at the same time, it's a very nice city growing a lot of new construction and a lot of high-tech businesses. So that's my report. Hmm. So Arne, does your daughter feel that things are on the upswing, that they will improve? She is concerned about the uh, increase in uh, homeless population. Uh, although they for now are staying in the condos they have, but um, it's a concern to not only to my daughter, but to people who I talk to, you know. Yeah. So how was your experience flying out there, the, the airline trip itself? Yeah, um, airport we flew from John Kennedy is about 50% of what it used to be before uh, COVID. And the same uh, regarding occupation in the airplane, you know, a lot of, about half of empty seats. Yeah. Well, thank you for that update. Anybody else? Well, we had mentioned uh, last meeting that uh, Stu Madison was being honored at Temple Sinai as a key member of their technology group. And that uh, took place on uh, last Saturday, April 17th. So Stu, we, we trust that you were uh, duly honored. Uh, how did it go? It, uh, oh, um, it went very well. It was uh, very well attended. Um, I think they maybe have probably had 90 or 100 screens, which uh, probably each screen was probably at least two or three people. So it was very well attended. Um, it was very nice. There were five of us who were honored. So it was um, uh, memorable and uh, very much appreciated by me and I'm sure the other guys too. Uh, it was very well executed and, um, uh, and the temple did pretty well in terms of fundraising. So it was, it was a great night, great night. Thank you. Yeah, well, that was a pretty impressive turnout. That's for sure. Anybody else? Well, that's all I've got. So everybody have a, a great day. Thank you, Dave. Dick Harper on the book club. Okay. Yeah, Dick. We've been reading a, a very interesting book by Hampton Sides. And we've read a couple of other books by Hampton. Hellhound on his trail, which is the killer of Martin Luther King being chased. Uh, and it's, a very, it's interestingly written, which seems to be Hampton Side's uh, strength. And now we've decided for the next book, which will be June 23rd, uh, it'll be a kind of tour around the South, spying on the South, which is a, a time when uh, Ohm, Frederick Law Olmsted took a trip through the South and the author is uh, Horowitz. Luke uh, is Tony Horowitz. So I'll have that in the hard copy so it can be on the slide next week. Thank you, Dave. But, um, I think you'll, anybody who reads Hellhound will enjoy it. Thank you, Dick. Uh, Okay, we've been uh, had a fairly lengthy meeting, and I see our speaker Mark Noonan is uh, aboard. Uh, so we will, uh, Mark, if you're ready, we'll proceed. And uh, 